All right, welcome everybody to today's presentation on document management solutions for human resources, specifically SharePoint solutions. My name is Kevin Ells. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Knowledge Lake, and I'm joined today by David Ross, Business Analyst at FNTI. We'll be focusing around what the business challenges are with organizations today, some of the stress points that organizations see, who the stakeholders are who are seeing those challenges, uh, what kind of solutions you can offer to that, and the benefits of those solutions. Of course, there's always roadblocks when you're trying to make change in your organization and how to address those roadblocks. And then we'll go into demonstrations of how the software works. It's really all about the software that's helping provide a solution to address your document challenges in the human resources world. We'll talk about a couple of customer case study examples, talk about how you can move forward with the next steps, and of course, answer your questions during our Q&A session. So before I uh, pass it over to Dave, I'm just going to bringing out the obvious. Today we've seen lots of business challenges. There's a uh, lot of challenges with every organization. Less people, less money, more people to do. So Dave, go ahead and tell us some of those stress points uh, that organizations are seeing today. Thanks Kevin. As Kevin mentioned earlier, I represent a company called FNTI. We're a division of Fidelity National Financial. And we only do one thing. We do one thing well. We convert physical records to digital ones. We're not in the software business, which means we work alongside companies like Kevin's who are in the software business. They provide systems and software. We parachute in and do a one-time conversion of historical files to get you off to a flying start. So we have a content problem. All that paper, everywhere you look, there's paper. And it's really hard to keep track of it all. And paper poses special challenges for the folks in HR. We're going to talk about five areas of human resources that are stressed if you rely on paper files. And we'll begin with employee onboarding. The big issue in onboarding is dealing with a myriad of documents, resumes, applications, forms, healthcare applications, and it comes to you in a variety of formats. It comes to you in paper, emails, PDF documents, Word documents. You probably receive text messages that are relevant as well. By the time a new hire joins the company, their file is already jammed with paper and there's more to come. So the problem is, in the paper world, we're heads down. We're focusing on completing and tracking forms. Ideally, we should be heads up, stepping a new hire through what should be an exciting and happy time, their career track with your company. In addition to a lot of wasted motion, onboarding uses traditional paper-based methods, and it sends a signal to new employees that hey, maybe all the hype I heard in the interviewing process about this company being ahead of its time doesn't hold up. And this can affect morale and motivation and potentially affect employee retention. Let's talk about our second pressure point, document management and retention. The two big issues here are, how do you maintain record security and how long do you keep records? From a security perspective, obviously an employee file contains sensitive data but it can also contain extremely sensitive data, like employee health information that's subject to HIPAA regulations. Controlling and limiting access to employee records can be challenging when you're working with paper, in part because you don't know when there's a breach. And if everything about that employee is stored in one paper file, how do you limit access to the more sensitive elements in that file? From a records retention standpoint, document management can be a two-edged sword. You can get in trouble for not keeping records for the required length of time. And you can also get in trouble if you retain records past the required date. Monitoring paper records for proper retention is obviously difficult, especially when retention guidelines are subject to federal as well as state regulations. That's compounded when you have offices in multiple states. So what are the implications? Well, let's say you're involved in a lawsuit with a former employee and it turns out you destroyed records that were important to your case. Or you're subject to an HR audit, and it turns out that you're holding on to information for too long. The penalties can range from a slap on the wrist to major financial liability. There's simply no easy way to manage document retention when you're paper-based. Our third stress point is performance management and valuation. So why is this difficult when you're working with paper files? Well, first consider that for many companies, their most expensive resource is people, labor. So performance reviews should be a thoughtful, 
deliberative process if improving performance is a priority. In the paper world, performance reviews require time to kick off and time to manage to an orderly completion. You have to notify managers uh, and give them deadlines. You have to ensure everybody's using the right forms. There may be new guidelines that folks have to follow when they complete their uh, performance reviews. And a lot of times managers have to be reminded or hounded to complete the reviews. Like onboarding, there's a fair amount of paper in employee reviews, and it is surrounded by manual tracking processes that chase down and secure every last review so your files are complete. The point here that is that an HR manager, you want to be more of a coach than an enforcer. And paper processes make you an enforcer because you have to manage physical records. Let's talk about policies and procedures. In a number of industries, um, healthcare and financial services are the two that I'm most familiar with. Developing and implementing policies and procedures is critical to operating within the law. But managing policies and procedures in the paper world can be a really disorderly process. A lot of people are involved in setting policy from executive staff, legal, human resources, various operating units, and this involves dialogue. It involves phone calls, meetings, emails. It's tough to know where you are in the process and who's had their say, or example, who, who signed off on a decision when policy creation is managed as an offline, paper-based activity. At the end of the day, policies and procedures kept in paper form can be well-kept secrets. Don't we want to ensure that these important documents are accessible to our employees who are affected by them? Look, policies and procedures are important tools to help you manage risk, help you comply with the law, and help you provide your customers the best products and services. But as business gets more complex, and as new regulations come into play, and what we deliver to the market becomes increasingly more advanced, you need a system to develop thoughtful policies and a means to ensure that employees are enlightened and informed about them. Let's move on to our last pressure point, compliance. Everyone's favorite subject, right? Compliance is one of those dark clouds that form when there's a pending HR audit. So what are the challenges preparing for an HR audit when you're not automated? Well, we touched on the compliance issue in our document management discussion. And we highlighted some of the difficulties in operating in a paper world. But Preparing for an HR audit has its own unique level of difficulty. It all boils down to whether you have the proper documentation in place, depending on what's being audited, whether that's immigration, labor, COBRA, equal employment. When you're paper-based, you have to review the files. And that's painstaking, and that's time-consuming. And there's a good possibility that something is going to be overlooked. It can take weeks to prepare for an HR audit because you have to sift through paper to discover what's there and what's not there. So tell me again why I signed up to be an HR manager. So to summarize, we operate in an increasingly complex HR world. At the same time, the pace of business is accelerating. People want answers at the speed of text messages and emails. We have more to manage, right? And to expect you to do all of this without the support of automation, I think, is asking too much. We have to work smarter, and we have not harder. I'm going to hand the baton back to Kevin, who's going to step us through the various stakeholders in the HR circle. Thank you, Dave. So, yes, there are many stakeholders, and I can list them right here for you. And briefly, let's just think of the different departments and the different personnel in the organization and what, how this affects them. First of all, you have your personnel. You are onboarding new employees. They want to make sure you get your, uh, their documents to you efficiently, don't want you uh, your documents getting lost, and um, you want the process to go smoothly. The first experience you have with an organization is the onboarding process, and you certainly want to get a good first taste of when you join this company that they have their act together. Then there's the benefits administrators. They have lots of documentation that they need to share with the organization. Now, traditionally, this would be an email blast out to the organization, but the minute that document's emailed, it's probably going to become somewhat obsolete. So you want to have a tool and a method to share information from the administrators and share the documentation efficiently and effectively. You have your payroll, the people who are going to sign those checks. Well, that's usually integrated with your human resources system. So you need true line of business integration, departmental integration between both finance and human resources. Then you have your human resources recruiters. They need to get communication inside your organization about 
first offering jobs to other departments, other people in the organization, uh, sharing what jobs are going out to the market. There's a lot of uh, resources included when you're dealing with the recruiter department. And of course, management and executive staff. Whenever they're going to change something, and there's going to be an investment in that change, a financial investment, you need to see an ROI on that investment. In the past, an ROI of three years, there's things people are looking for, but in this much tighter, more efficient economy, you need to see ROIs in not years, but months. And finally, the IT department. If you're like me and you've worked with many organizations with many IT departments, you want to make sure that you provide them or offer them a solution that they're going to want to support. You want to make sure that the tools you're offering are going to be compatible with the tools they're all using today, that they don't have to go out and learn a ton of new technology. In fact, take advantage of the investment the IT department has already made in the organization and start growing on that investment. Now, I'm going to pass it back to Dave here and talk about how we accomplish taking on some of these business challenges. Dave, stage is yours. Well, we've already focused on how difficult it can be to manage HR when you're working with paper. I want to turn our attention to how our five stress points can be reduced when you employ the right kind of automation. And we're going to start with onboarding. So how does a human resources information system or HR information system make onboarding easier? Well, first, you can provide an easy way to compile all those forms into one database that you can easily track and easily update. The second thing you can do is track and schedule activity. When you're working with information in digital form, you can let software alert you when something's missing or when something's due. You don't have to rely on memory. Also, the employee file is up to date with all of the required documentation coming out of the gate when you uh, work with electronic information system and onboarding. Now, this is going to make you a more organized company and you'll look like you're better prepared, which should inspire confidence in your new hires. How can HR improve document management and retention? Well, once again, it's easier to track information when it is in digital form. Your document retention requirements, well, that can be what we call a table-driven activity. That is, documents can be matched against a table that lists retention requirements by state and by document type. And you can be alerted when documents are no longer required to be kept, or you can allow the application to automatically delete them. If you flag a file as one involved in an employee dispute, that file can remain intact regardless of the retention horizon. So you won't be at a disadvantage in court or arbitration. And your files are going to be more secure. While well, five people may be able to view an employee file, maybe only two of those people have a right to see medical information. So you can manage rights around who gets to see what. You can segment by document type. How about performance management and evaluation? Well, similar to onboarding, the employee evaluation process usually involves forms and schedules. Converting those to electronic records makes it easier to track where you are in the review process. And when something's missing, be it a piece of data or a signature, the appropriate person can automatically be notified. And once again, when the process is in order, and everyone's done their jobs, your files will be up to date as well as any related records such as payroll. And one more thing, you can make employee records easier for managed to access. Let's, let's say they want to review the past two performance appraisals before they do a third one. You can then make that available on demand to managers who have the proper authority to view them. How does an HRIS make policies and procedures easier to manage? Well, having policies and procedures in electronic form clearly makes them more accessible to your internal clients. They're not well-kept secrets anymore. And you can also take steps to ensure that the documents are being read by requiring employees to electronically acknowledge that they've reviewed the material. And you know who has acknowledged and who has not. And you can chase down the folks that have not uh, made the required acknowledgments. From a policy development standpoint, you can more easily get everyone on the same page. You can create a platform using technology that enables people to exchange ideas, amend documents, and weigh in with opinions, maintaining a proper paper trail. Individuals involved in the process can be notified when their input is needed or when it comes time to sign off on the policy. The whole process of policies and procedures can be much more buttoned down, and you'll be better protected as an enterprise. And what about compliance? Well, 
HR automation has a very positive effect on compliance and audit readiness. In the digital world, compliance is an ongoing process, not an event. An HR system can monitor for missing documents and incomplete information, making audit readiness a real-time proposition. Now, when you first deploy an HR information system, you may want to run exception reports to identify missing documents like I-9 forms. But once you remediate them, your HR files can always be in compliance or a few keystrokes away as compliance mandates dictate. To sum it all up, in a non-automated world, we manage by exception. That is, we spend valuable time chasing down information or reminding others that we need their input or worrying about whether our files are in compliance with any one of a dozen different mandates. HR automation changes that dynamic by programmatically reminding us when something is missing or when it's due. I'm going to turn the floor back over to Kevin, who's going to begin to unpack the technology side of HR automation. One of the challenges you may have if you're using SharePoint, and we know many of our audience today are using SharePoint, is um, you may have a SharePoint problem. Part of the challenge of working with the platform is a lot of organizations have rolled out SharePoint as an HR solution, but they haven't invested in the time and training to provide a very solid solution. Uh, out of the box, SharePoint does have some challenges. Uploading content can be time consuming, and people just throw stuff really over the fence from the desktop into a file folder on SharePoint and really reproduce some of the challenges you had before with traditional file sharing systems. And if you put stuff in the wrong place, search can be painful. You're wasting a lot of time trying to guess where to look for the information, browsing through libraries, digging through folders, and really wasting time. And the point of this implementation of a solution is to increase productivity, not make people frustrated wasting time, maybe even losing information. And what we've seen in the past has become a glorified shared drive. Now, fortunately, we're going to talk about how to solve that solution today. So we're just pointing this out for many of you who may have tried SharePoint in the past and said, eh, you know, we tried it and it didn't work very well. The real goal here is to help you cultivate the investment that you've made in this IT um, investment. There's lots of things you can do to cultivate this. I mean, first of all, we always want to reduce our costs. We want to reduce our spending on traditional systems traditional printing and copying of paper and related information. We want to lower the infrastructure costs, spending on the physical file space of how you're storing your documents. Uh, everybody's spending a lot of money on filing cabinets, and really they're just glorified boxes that aren't doing much besides filling up expensive real estate. And you want to help reduce the department footprint by eliminating those paper records. Now, in addition, and there's lots of other things we can talk about in spending. In fact, we have other presentations on our website that go deeper, deeper into all the costs associated with paper records. One of the key things is increasing productivity. Here, you'll help improve your efficiency and reduce the time you spend on mundane tasks like looking for something, trying to file a document, running over to a filing cabinet, answering a call from a, an employee going, uh, do you have my employee record? Just a minute, or hold on, I'll call you back. We can help streamline the policy creation, approval, and distribution while improving employee awareness and tracking compliance. We're basically improving the processes. They run more smoothly, more efficiently, and less costly. And we do this by improving productivity through workflow, using the software to move the documents. And that can be helping you how you respond to your employees or customers. We can increase the quality of service in the organization. And that always increases employee satisfaction. Your higher level of service will increase result in increased employee satisfaction and hopefully, ultimately, greater employee retention. And that's really key for employees like myself who work remotely. Uh, getting access to information or responses to requests uh, can be very slow if you're working in a remote location and you're waiting for somebody at the headquarters to go dig up a document for you. Why not just have the person um, self-service? Go to a website do a query for a document that I have the rights to and find the information myself. Um, beyond service, we have control, compliance, and preparedness. With control, you can increase control of these documents and, as Dave said, access to these human resources records across the whole enterprise. You can improve your compliance and you can prepare for audits. And I'll show you a little bit later on on some of the tools that are able to help you do this auditing, 
locking down records and finding records and setting record retention, kind of the stuff you don't really want to worry about and let the software do it for you. Very importantly, you can elevate your ability to prepare for a disaster. That could be a fire or a flood or um, any concerns that you have with your documents being destroyed. By making electronic copies and having those backed up, you can restore your organization very quickly. And you can have better file management. You can simplify the policy administration and automate that document retention by having the software know where the documents are, what type of documents they're supposed to be, and even know and automate, automatically destroy the documents when the time comes, reducing a lot of the time and effort. So Dave, there's some other roadblocks. You know, we have these great solutions, but why do companies not implement solutions off the get-go? It's well, such a great idea. The roadblocks at every crossroads in the path of the future stand a thousand people guarding the past. One roadblock is a concern for file security. Now, there's a couple of underlying issues here, one of which is that security requirements aren't uniform, that certain documents in an employee file merit a higher level of security access. Of course, a modern HR information system can accommodate this by assigning privilege levels to users, assuming you've done a proper job of document classification. A second concern is the perception that electronic files are subject to theft or hacking. And that's true if you don't take proper precautions or have the right protocols in place. First, protect employee records using secure networks. Second, don't pack up employee files on the hard drive that you keep in the trunk of your car. Third, replace, place restrictions on what files can be stored on the local hard drive or a thumb drive. Data portability is a big problem. Converting to digital information management is not going to inoculate you against the risk of a security breach. But with the right system and safeguards in place, your employee files will be much more secure than your paper files, and you'll have better control over them. A second objection is that documents will be harder to find in an automated system. I think that anxiety about having to learn a new system is driving that. Anybody who's done a document search on a local PC knows you can find files using any number of criteria, keywords, file names, dates, other criteria. Things are just easier to find when they're stored electronically. And HR information systems operate the same way. They're intuitively designed to give you multiple paths and ways to find documents and records. In reality, it's not going to take days or even hours to learn how to find things in an HR information system. The more advanced systems are so logically organized that training time is minimal. Here's another objection. We already have an HR system. Well, that may be true, but it's also true that the same system may not do certain things well, like capture information from the tsunami of formats that swamp you or make nice with other software and systems. A modern HR information system can fill in those gaps, providing a document management feature or connect with other applications in the enterprise, like payroll, or do a better job of file management. In this case, an investment doesn't gut the current platform. It advances it by creating new efficiencies and new capabilities that may be lacking in the legacy platform. And finally, there's the issue around control. Some HR managers are perfectly happy with the way things work today. They like being in control. Well, the opposite of control is self-service, as Kevin said. And fighting to maintain control is an uphill battle because the world is moving to self-service. We make our own travel reservations. We change our own phone calling plans. We pick stocks. We make investments. We are more in control of our own world in today's economy. Just like you can't fight City Hall, you can't fight self-service. Look, in reality, the time you spend on controlling records or managing behavior can better be spent helping others become better managers or employees. That's the higher calling I think we signed up for as HR managers, not being enforcers that demand that projects and documentation are being completed. Most of the roadblock issues, I think, are about change. And change can be uncomfortable. But there's a lot to be gained when you transition to electronic records management for HR files. You can elevate the entire enterprise with more orderly and efficient processes and by making information easier to manage. And Kevin, I'm going to turn it back over to you. What we do and how we solve these problems. Well, Knowledge Lake, that's why we're involved here. We are the experts at document management solutions. 
We consider ourselves the SharePoint experts. We've been doing it for quite a long time, two million users licensed worldwide, three-time Microsoft Partner of the Year, lots of awards, lots of recognition. But basically, the reason why is we've been doing this for so long. We started looking at SharePoint back around 2001, started implementing solutions since then, and you've come to the right place with the people with the answers. We call ourselves the founders in ECM SharePoint, and now we're going to show you how we solve these problems. How we solve these problems and what efficiencies they increase. Basically, what we've seen is if we can move document management and data capture into a more efficient process, a more electronically focused process, and move from paper paper-based processing to workflow-based processing to even electronic files moving around in a more efficient way, you can increase your productivity by at least one-third. So before I get too technical, because I know many people in the audience here aren't going to want to sit here and learn about a bunch of acronyms, let's just give you some quick, real quick definitions. Enterprise Content Management, or ECM, is a lot of things. And I'm not going to read these bullet points to you because half of them you're not going to have interest in. And that's not what we're going to be covering today. We're going to focus today on really five major areas. Transactional content management, or just like it sounds like, managing a transaction. And that transaction could be onboarding an employee, uh, doing employee review, you name it. Advanced capture, we'll talk a little about that, but that's letting the software do all the work for you. Throw a piece of paper in a scanner and it just does it all on its own. Knows what kind of document it is, how to extract the data, what, where that document goes, et cetera, et cetera. We'll be focusing on some traditional document management, giving you some highlights about how we re manage those records, and focus a little bit on the workflow or business process management. So the real key here to making all this work is structuring and managing your content efficiently, putting information around these documents so you can find them. So when you have a document, such as a resume, that you can find it a lot of different ways, and you know where to find it. A resume, for example, would have the first name, last name, employees, birth date, address, phone number. And then you know you put it in a certain file in the HR for the employee records. And we'll see all that in just a second. The goal here is to have the users focus on the information and not spend their time wondering where they put it or where, the, where somebody else put it and how they find it. And most importantly, we're going to build this on an investment that most organizations have already made, which is the SharePoint platform. So what I'm going to show you now is a kind of a scenario. It's a little bit of a loose scenario of different uh, examples of how you're dealing with documents in the, in the process of onboarding an employee. Please forgive me if it's a little bit uh, fictional. Uh, everything you're going to see in here for data-wise is certainly fictional data. We're not using any real employee records. But what we're going to talk about here is kind of an sample of an employee onboarding. But this could be used in many different ways. In the interest of time, I can't show you demonstrations of policies, procedures, self-service, records management, you name it. But I'm going to try my best to hint on most of it. What we're going to see first is a little bit of self-service. Uh, you receive um, a resume from somebody who wants a new job and you want to throw that into the HR system or throw it into a process of workflow so the person who's listing the job can see that resume and decide if they want to maybe throw an interview in there. So the simplest process, you would think it would be simple, of simply adding a resume to an HR system can be a lot of steps. What you're going to see here, directly from inside the Outlook where I receive the email, just a couple of clicks and I'll throw it into the HR system. So here we're looking at our traditional Outlook, and what you see here is I've received an email, and it has a resume. What I'm going to do is click on the Knowledge Link button at the top, say bring up all the sites that I can place this, and I can see I have an accounting, a CRM system, a human resources system. Of course, this is a resume, so I'm going to probably put it in the human resources system. In fact, every day I get resumes, so I'm going to click on my favorite resume and say add this to the resume queue. What it does, it puts it into a queue waiting to be indexed. And all I have to do now is complete some indexes or metadata to define the name of this document. I'm going to put the person's name on there. And it's Pillar Ackerman. And Pillar is applying for the executive assistant, although I'm a little concerned about Pillar's ability to proofread his own subject line and spell assistant correctly. I define it as a position of executive assistant. I say today's date, add the phone number, and hit save. And that's it. The resume is now going off into a library, which recognizes it as a new document in that library. And now it's going to trigger a notification for a person who's looking to fill the executive assistant position to take a look at that resume. And that goes on in the background. So the user really didn't have to do much. 
simply search your resume, add some metadata, and the information is put in the correct library automatically. But the user didn't even need to go over here. They need, don't need to worry about where the document's going. They just need to know that they're adding a resume to a process. So that's adding a simple document, a single document. Let's move ahead, let's say, four weeks and the employees comes in and they complete an interview and they start completing some of those countless numbers of onboarding documents, including your I-9 form, your application, your resume, and so forth. What we're going to see now is a process of capturing that paper, indexing it with as few keystrokes as possible in a very simple to use interface, allowing us to capture really a lot of documents with not a lot of keystrokes. And you know, if you're doing this all the time, you'll find the software is more accurate than the human being as far as doing data entry. We're going to see a scan a document, digitize it into an image. This could be a PDF or a TIFF, an Acrobat document in other words. We're going to extract the metadata, we're going to validate the information is accurate, and then we're going to store it in SharePoint. What we're going to do is actually use some what's called separator sheets, and these are the little documents you slice in between each document type where you're scanning, and this helps the software identify what document it is. When the document's scanned, these sheets disappear, and the software knows that it's received a resume, an I-9 form, identification, and so forth. So here we see our software. looks very similar to an um, Office toolbar application. So the, the ribbon toolbar is very simple and intuitive. There's not a lot of buttons to learn. You don't need to overwhelm people with every piece of technology the software can do, and really all they need to do is scan and index. And now I've scanned the documents. The software's automatically created six different documents out of the seven pages. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start indexing. Now, indexing is really adding the metadata so you can find the document later or put it in the right place. So when I click the index button, it queries and says, HR, what indexes do you want for this type of document? And the application saying, I have to have the first name, last name, and social security number. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just type it in. Now we can do manual typing, we can do database lookups, we can do optical character recognition, we can pick information off a list, we can do radio buttons and check boxes. You're going to see all of these going through as I click away. So I type the social security number, I'm now going to complete the position, so I'm going to pick it off a list of different positions. I'm going to complete the phone number, and then complete the date. And when I get down to the area where I'm selecting region, what it's going to do is automatically filter a region and say, okay, in that region there's only certain territories, so it's a, a pick list. Once again, not letting people type stuff in because they make mistakes using lists and databases to make more efficiency. I'm going to do some optical character recognition, or OCR, simply drag over a field, say add this information to the date index, and it will extract the data for me. I didn't have to type anything. In fact, I could have done OCR over any of these regions and indexed the information that way. Here I'm picking a few things up a list. I'm going to make a few comments, like this looks like a good applicant, and hit accept. And then I'll move on to the next document. And so my next document is going to change, and it's going to bring up this uh, I-9 form. And I see I have to put the Social Security number. That's why the field is red. So I'm going to pick the Social Security number off a list. Now, once again, folks, these are all fake numbers, so don't worry about it. But notice the employee ID, first name, and last name was automatically filled. What it did was it looked up this employee from the HR system and knew the indexes that were going to be used, that Social Security number, and filled it in for me saved me the effort of typing in those fields. Now I know every other document coming is about this person with the same social security number, the same employee ID. So I'm locking down these fields saying every next document will use the same ID, same number, same date, so forth. And what you'll see now is when I move to the next documents, I don't type anything. The indexing is just automatically applied because we're sharing the information between pages. So as you see, and I'm capturing between five to six to seven indexes per document, but I'm not typing anything at this point. Really, all I'm doing is validating the information is correct, and the, we are identifying the document with the right type of document type. The only thing I have to do here is check box. It's a social security number. I can see that that's the right form of ID from list C. I hit accept. And I've now completed close to 30 to 35 indexes. I really only typed first name, last name. 
and now I've completed all that information. And now it's routing those documents to the right libraries. They may go in other locations. So the process of scanning, and I've actually done this in kind of a slow mode um, demonstration to show you how the steps go. A lot of this can actually be automated completely, what's called advanced capture. You throw the documents in the scanner and it knows how to find the fields just like a human being would browse over a document. Now once the documents are in the system, you want to put them into some type of process. And what that process usually will involve is integration into your human resources system, the system you're using today. Now that could be a system from Microsoft like Great Plains or AX or other line of business systems. Now you probably have other departments in your organization using even other line of business systems, but you want to share information between them. Your sales may want to share information between your accounting. Your human resources may want to share information between your finance and so forth. What's great is you can use one document management system, SharePoint, to store all the documents and share information or documents between these departments. So what you're going to see now is we've already onboarded that employee. We've put all their documents in there. But from what I've been told, HR has a real challenge with missing documents. Missing a document which is part of a set. Part of the onboarding is you have to have two forms of identification to match with that I-9 form. What you're going to see here is a demonstration of going into a line of business system, which is Great Plains, looking up an employee, saying, give me all his documents, and being notified that there's a document missing. We'll then go and make a request for somebody to supply that document. So here I am inside Great Plains, and I'm looking at a particular employee ID. And you'll see there's a little button here. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with Great Plains, uh, you wouldn't recognize that there's a special new button. There's a little button up here that's added by Knowledge Lake, and it says whatever you want it to do. In this case, I can allow it to query all the employee records, add documents, scan a page, add a missing ID form, and so forth. What I'm going to do now is to say, I want to see all my employee records. What we're actually going to do is send a query over to the SharePoint system based on the last name, or actually the employee ID, and their social security number. As we send it over, all the documents are going to come back and present themselves to the end user. At that point, the user can start browsing around the documents and taking a look to make sure everything's in order. Here, you're seeing the results come back in an interface just passed over that query and provided me all the documents, including the I-9 form. Now at this point, I could edit some data on the I-9 form, but what I really want to do is take a closer look at this. So I click on it and bring it up in the Knowledge Lake viewer. This viewer allows us to look at any kind of document that's been scanned, PDF, TIFF type file, and you can treat it like paper. You could do things like add a rubber stamp, you can put highlighting, sticky notes, you can actually redact or hide information on there. But what we're actually going to focus on today is finding out is all the information in the process completed. So I'm going to give this a chance to spin around. I'm going to take a look at some of the questions coming in as the demonstration is proceeding here. Now one thing you're going to notice as I go back and look at the document is one thing that's missing here is one of the forms of identification. So when I go and say, find all the documents that are related or linked to this document, we're going to see a little red box over here by identification saying there's only one of two documents. We know there's two documents or two forms of ID required, and so I can see that I'm missing one. I'll click on the document I have, and it's telling me I've got type of list C, the social security card, so I need to get one from list B or list A. There's a little workflow process right next to this document you trigger and saying, Start a workflow. Notify the person who's supposed to get the documents there's something missing. That's all they had to push. The software now is sending off an email to the HR manager responsible for acquiring these documents. And there's the email coming in saying, you're missing two forms of ID. They realized they happened to have one that came in as an email. A couple of days later, the guy forgot to show up with his driver's license. And once again, I'm just inside Outlook. All I have to do is look up employee ID, type in, Pilar's employee ID, you'll know, look up all the index information. I say it's a driver's license, I hit save. Now the document's caught, captured and put back into the system. The user goes back into the workflow or goes back to their email and says, I've completed that process and the job is done. 
Now, of course, this scenario wouldn't really make any sense at all if I was the same person who was looking at this who added the document. So you wouldn't send off a workflow process to yourself telling yourself to add the document. In the real world, you may just go ahead and say, I need to add the document right from your line of business system. So you click a button inside the line of business system, and if you had that document, you could pull it off your desktop, or if you had some document you need to scan, you could scan it right from your own personal scanner sitting next to you. Here you can see an example where I'm adding a PDF file that I had sitting on my desktop and I forgot to add when I uploaded the documents earlier. So I simply drag it over, say continue, and the software knows to use all the indexes that are on the line of business system to associate to that document. There's all the information about Pillar and all I need to do now is mark this as a driver's license and hit save. Now I know for the folks of you who are seeing all the software for the first time, it seems like it's a lot of functionality going on here and a lot of steps, but the truth of the matter is once people have been shown how to use this, they can be doing it in just a few minutes. We've had companies implement this and offer users about 15 to 20 minutes of training and they're like, okay, that's how I add a document, easy. This is how I search for a document, easy. The more you integrate it into your existing line of business systems, the more likely the users are going to be familiar with the interfaces and require less training. Now, for people who aren't living in that line of business system, you also want to provide the ability to have search, the ability to find your information quickly and easily. Now, if anybody's, you know, we've all used Bing and Google, and we know Google and Bing are great at finding really popular documents and help you find the most popular document. But HR is not about the most popular employee. It's about finding the exact information on that employee as quickly and as easily as possible. What this provides is really anybody in the organization access to information very quickly. Now that information they have access to, of course, is secured and skewed so it's only what they're allowed to see. What this allows is self-service where employees can go find their own information like their employee review or other documents, documentation, employee um, benefits packages and so forth from just a simple interface. So what you're going to see here is going into SharePoint, and for those of you not familiar with SharePoint, it has its own built-in search, but it's like Bing and Google. And so when it's going to search for a document about, let's say, find me everything about Mr. Ackerman, it's going to find the documents, but what it responds back with it as an interface is not terribly intuitive. I can see the offer letter there, but the rest of these documents, I'm going to have to open them and click on them and close them until I find what I'm looking for. So what we provide is an interface to allow you to search on any of those indexes that you've added to the document and present a user interface that couldn't be more intuitive. I want to look through each HR on everything on this last name. In fact, I don't even know how to spell Ackerman, so I'm going to go A-C-K, and it's going to find everything with last name that started with Ackerman. Now, some of these documents have an employee ID, some don't. The reason why, when the employee was coming on to onboard, he hadn't, didn't have an employee ID yet, because he hadn't been, became an employee. At this point, you could add that employee ID to those documents. But what I really want to do is take a look at that application and his resume, and compare the two together. See if he's really saying what he did on his application based on his resume. So I'm bringing up those two documents. I'm going to compare them side by side and view them once again in our viewer. Now, I could share this with somebody else if I wanted somebody else to do this. I could email them a link. I could email the actual attachments themselves. But what I'm going to do is just compare the two very quickly, highlighting the document I want to look at, and say, compare them side by side. Make it easier to view. And at this point, I could do a number of things, highlighting sticky notes, sharing it with somebody, triggering a workflow to start an employment process. But once again, very simply finding a document, bringing it up on the screen, viewing it, and taking action on those documents. Now, let's jump ahead a year. That employee has been working for the company for a year and it's now time to complete their employee review. Well, traditionally, somebody would email over an employee review, and then the employee would edit it, and then email that over to their manager to put their comments, but then the employee remembers he wanted to put something else on there, so he asked the manager to email it back and forth. It's a cumbersome process. The best way would be to have it inside SharePoint and share a link to that so everybody has access to it. So the employee clicks on the link, brings up the employee evaluation, fills out the evaluation, and then just saves it right back into SharePoint. That same ability to upload and index information 
is now available inside any application like Office applications. I shouldn't say any application, Office applications like Word, PowerPoint, Excel. And here, right from inside Word, I can say this is my employee evaluation. Take advantage of that same employee ID lookup. So I type in the employee ID, completes all the indexes for me, and the document saved. Pretty easy to teach your employees how to add content to your HR system by adding one button to their Word, their Outlook, their Excel and PowerPoint systems. Now once all this information is in place, you are going to want to make sure it doesn't live forever. You have rules, as Dave mentioned, about compliance, records management, and so forth. We can provide a very robust records management system that allows you to control this information very efficiently with the users not having to worry about where they put it and how long it lasts, or should it get destroyed. The software can do all the work for you. What happens is documents come in, they're classified based on the type of document they are, they fall into a class, which means that's how they live, what happens to them. That affects the mandates of how long they last, where they go, who can see them, where their life cycle is, and we also enhance the system to allow the people who have to come in and do the audits, the reviews, discoveries and holds have all this interface to this information. Much more efficient than coming in and dealing with your paper system or digging through your thumb drives, your hard drives, your shared drives, your email, your paper systems, and then even imagine trying to do that when you've got a remote employees. All this can be done now electronically. And once you've found a system like this is working efficiently for you, you're going to want to move all your content over. And that's one of the uh, benefits of a single repository. You can migrate your old stuff and get rid of your old filing cabinets as well. Now we have lots of use cases. HR is not the only solution that we offer with Knowledge Lake Solution. We offer all kinds of different solutions for all kinds of departments and all kinds of industries. You basically, I like to walk into a company, if I see filing cabinets and paper and inboxes, you've got a document management problem that could probably be better addressed with an electronic content management system. And here's just a snippet of some of the companies that are using it. Now, I'm going to actually ask your permission to read a little bit about a couple of case studies. We have just a little bit of time. I think I'm only going to have time now for one case study. So I think I'm going to go ahead and talk about the New Jersey State Agency. Now, these guys, the Civil Service Agency, were really bogged down with large volumes of paper, tens of thousands of documents. And they wanted to streamline its processes because they knew they could do faster process of information if they moved away from paper to electronic files. Traditionally, over the years, they had really cumbersome, expensive hiring processes. Paper documents were coming in through tons of channels, multiple channels. They had delays in processing. They had challenges for responding to phone calls from applicants. They were losing documents, which were creating further delays. They had difficulties matching up old documents with new documents, so missing documents. Where does it go? Who does it go with? How do I get it there? Um, they knew they had a challenge. So they evaluated many options, many IT options, and they were using Microsoft technology, so they took a look at Knowledge Lake to complement their SharePoint implementation. Their, their comments are they, after evaluating the other options, they felt Knowledge Lake offered greater flexibility and customization for capturing paper and documents flowing into the agency. It also offered the best solution for digital content aggregation, integration, and integration into their existing online system. Uh, briefly, the benefits by deploying the solution were pretty straightforward. Their processes were more efficient. They were easier to deploy. They reduced the delays in processing applicants, and therefore they were able to hire their employees more efficiently or more quickly because you know that getting a good employee is hard to do. And there's nothing worse than getting a good employee in, get them interviewed, and you don't get them through that hiring process quick enough, and they go to another organization. Now they have faster access to their information. They have the search center where not only just the HR, but their employees have faster access for information with minimal training. They simply fill out that form you saw, and now they can find the information so very precisely and very accurately for the information they're looking for. And now they've looked at it. They're expanding it into other organizations to, drill, to deal with the tens of thousand documents they handle annually. And they're expanding it out to other departments, including their, H, uh, their accounting department. Now I'm looking at my time, and we're coming up on the top of the hour. So in the presentation recording, you will have information about other case studies. Of course, on our website, you can look at other case studies. I'm seeing a number of questions coming in right now. But Dave, I'm going to pass the, um, the mic over to you while I review these questions. 
Folks, start firing your questions in because we can happily to answer them with the time we have left. If we run over, we'll continue answering questions and you folks can stay or leave, but we'll get a recording to you. So fire away your questions and Dave, the stage is yours. Nice of, uh, getting started. And as much as I'd like to present my 10-point plan for how best it can start, I'm going to suggest that uh, you start with a phone call. Um, there is an orderly way to go about beginning this process. Um, and usually it involves discovery. Uh, we need to know what are your pressure points. Is it onboarding? Is it document management? Is it uh, employee evaluation? We need to know uh, what is important to you in terms of functionality, workflow, and, and uh, performance improvement. We also need to know how do we help you persuade your management that this is the right investment to make at this time. So uh, there is an orderly process. It is usually centered on discovery. That discovery leads to a plan, which leads to a proposal. Um, and so it, it is a stepwise process, and it does not begin with someone thrusting a contract under your nose and saying, sign here will make the pain go away. Uh, so the best place to start is with a phone call where we can quickly assess your situation recommend a course of action. We've done so many conversions in the past. We're pretty good about sizing up a project and outlining the best options for you on how best to proceed. So Kevin, I'll turn the, uh, the, the floor back to you. Okay, great. Uh, one thing I, you know, this is a lot of information, especially for people who haven't seen all this technology before, and I want to kind of summarize it. I like to give you, you know, the one thing you're going to walk away with at the end. And the real thing is I like to say is, you know, it real, really drives business value. By tagging your information, your documents, on a number of different ways, through your Outlook, through your desktop, through your scanner, and adding metadata, a lot of people can do this, but they make it hard. What we do is make it easy, and easiness increases user adoption. That's the key, really making your employees want to use the software, not make it uh, uh, disrupting for their daily life and creating more work for them. So there will be a little bit of change. But bottom line is we make it easy to get in there and easy to find. That's all you need to really remember. Now, I did see a couple of questions about really relating to the easiness. Is it possible when you're scanning to not have to type anything in, to set up a template? If you have a form and information's always in the same spot, can you use a template to extract that data? And absolutely, you can do that. Depending on the complexity of the form, there are some different challenges. Multi-page forms, the information be on one page or the second page. So the software we have would be different depending on the complexity. One thing I would never suggest is trying to do handwriting recognition. Um, handwriting is generally challenging, to say the least. Everybody's handwriting is different. And even in best case scenarios with constrained boxes and single letters, you're still going to have a little bit of data entry error. We find more often than not um, it's better off just to type some of that stuff in. Now I have some other questions coming in. I'm going to try to field them as quickly as I can. Um, Dave, I think this one fires off to more your side because you guys do the back conversion. Um, can you convert historical HR records in different remote offices or do they have to send it to a single repository like your headquarters to do the scanning? You know, in, in human resources, Kevin, this is a big requirement for two reasons. Number one, nobody wants to ship their valuable HR records off to a remote location or to a third-party location because, A, they don't trust transit, and P, they're, they're going to be out of touch. So a lot of times we're called in to mount a conversion effort in our clients' offices, and we'll organize a conversion team or conversion teams that use local resources that have been trained and screened and hired to uh, convert documents on site. The object being to do it quickly, to not interfere with local uh, uh, business operations, and to uh, complete the process in such a way that your impact or your footprint on the local office is de minimis. So yes, uh, in HR especially, we're called on to provide document conversion services in our clients' facilities because clients like to keep HR records close at hand. All right, and so when you're doing that, you're not really disrupting the office too much besides having a little room there with a scanner. People still have access to all their information, and it's not going to really stop business or concern people that they don't have access to their information. 
there's a question here on what steps do you take to make sure that those documents are safe and secure? I mean, there's you know, certainly some challenges that people see when they move it to an electronic system. How is it going to be secure in there? Now, I can speak to our technology where you can tag any, any of the metadata that can be used as a rule to secure any information. Um, what steps do you take when you're scanning the documents to make sure that they're safe? and Physical record security, and by that I mean uh, is our facility, whether it's local or remote, um, capable of preventing unauthorized access? So we take precautions to ensure that if there are doors, they're, they're locked. If there uh, are access points, that they're monitored. And if there are uh, buildings, they are uh, not surrounded by most of the alligators, but, but uh, physically maintained so they're secure. Two, there's electronic security to ensure that there cannot be a hacking or a breach access to documents. And so um, we have uh, very sophisticated systems to ensure that uh, records are electronically protected while they're in our possession. And third, there's employee screening. And that is to say that uh, any employee who views or touches an employee record has gone through an exhaustive screening process um, that exceeds the standards practiced by a number of businesses um, in Fortune 500 companies because we recognize the sensitivity around this kind of information. So it is a tripartite type approach to ensuring the security integrity information. Excellent. Now one thing to keep in mind, you don't have to bring in a third party to scan your documents. You're very capable of scanning your own documents. In fact, I have uh, many organizations who want to do a back file, we call it back file conversion, and they've just used interns to do it for them, or they've got basements full of documents and they just want to get them in so they can do it themselves. There's really a variety of options, but many companies choose to, you know, when you're doing a really high volume of back file, but then they forward you, don't scan that many documents per week. It doesn't make sense investing a really expensive scanner designed for these high volumes. Just bring somebody else in to do it for you and then buy some low-end scanners for moving day forward. Now we're at the top of the hour right now. I don't see any other questions that need to be addressed directly right now. Feel free to shoot your questions over to me. My name is Kevin Ells, and you can find me kevin.ells at knowledgelink.com, or send your questions over to our sales department at KnowledgeLink. So I appreciate your time. Dave, thank you for the dedication and time developing your part of the presentation. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Dave. Bye-bye.